Well, hello out there again, everybody. This is Marvelous Mark from the Off the Rope Show. I'm not talking about wrestling this time. I'm talking about pro football. I'm talking about the wild card playoffs. This year, there are, there are some teams that are in the playoffs that weren't here last year. Probably most notably, the Indianapolis Colts, who won two games last year. And they moved up to 11 this year. Probably mostly due to Andrew Luck, who was the number one pick in the draft this year. And also, the Minnesota Vikings... I'm not going to lie here. I expected this team to win six games at most, and they won ten. Probably largely due to Adrian Peterson, who came within nine yards of, of breaking Eric Dickerson's single-season rushing record. But then you got teams who, who you expected to be in the playoffs this year, such as the Houston Texans and, and the Green Bay Packers, and that's about it for as far as the wild card round goes. But what I'm going to start with is the Saturday matchups. All right, the first matchup on Saturday is a rematch of, of last year's wild card game between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Houston Texans. Last year, it was the first matchup between two rookie quarterbacks in playoff history. You had Andy Dalton against TJ Yates, who was starting for the injured Matt Schaub. But... There won't be no T.J. Yates in this game this year because Matt Schaub is healthy and he will play. And thing thing about the Texans is that all they had to do was win one of their last two games against against the Vikings or the Indianapolis Colts to sew up the number one seed. But they kind of fell a little off by the wayside the last two games of the season, so they ended up dropping from the one seed to the three seed. So that's why they're playing on Wild Card Weekend. But but as far as the Bengals go, Marvin Lewis has never won a playoff game. He's 0-3, and uh, and that's only that's second worst uh, to Jim Morris Sr., who who won 0-6 in the playoffs. Maybe that's why he doesn't like to talk about playoffs. Don't talk to me about playoffs. Playoffs. <laughs> I mean, you you can't <laughs> you just can't mention playoffs and Jim Moore in the same sentence without going into his little rant. <laughs> But anyway, the Bengals have not won a playoff game since 1990. Since well, that was back in the day when Boomer Siason was their quarterback, so that's been a really long time. I, I was a pretty young guy back then. I was about half the age I am now. But then some things about the game: um, Can J.J. Watt get to Andy Dalton? If he can, that's it. May be a long day for Dalton because that. Because then he won't be able to get the ball to to his main wide out and mainly AJ Green. And, and as far as Matt Schaub, he wants to get the ball to Andre Johnson as much as possible and, and then I'll also get Arian Foster involved. Both teams can get to the quarterback. JJ Watt ended up with twenty and a half sacks this year, which is which was too short of Michael Strand's record set a few years ago. And as far as the Bengals go. They were third in the league in in sacks, and Geno Atkins had 12 and a half this year at defensive tackle, and and quiet, very quietly, Michael Johnson, who's a defensive end, he had 11 and a half sacks. And so, as far as far as what I think is going to happen in this game, if Arian Foster can run like he has most of the season. I see no reason why Houston cannot win this game, and I think they're going to win 24 to 17, and they will advance. And Marvin Lewis will go to 0 4 in the playoffs. All right, and now for the later game on Saturday night, it'd be a rematch of last Sunday's matchup between the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers. I think it'd be pretty tough to top the game on on Sunday when Blair Walsh kicked the Vikings into the playoffs with a field goal at, as time expired and they won 37-34. Um, as I said in the opening, there was there wasn't hardly anybody that would have thought the Vikings would be in this position, let alone be in the playoffs this year. Except maybe the guys in the in the Minnesota locker room, but so they're 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 largely in the playoffs because because of the Play of one AD himself, Adrian Peterson, who rushed for 2,097 yards this year, which left him 
nine yards short of the all-time rushing record set by Eric Dickerson back in 1984. And the two games this year against the Packers, he rushed for 409 yards. In the, in the first matchup at Lambeau Field, he rushed for 210 yards, and then the game Sunday, he rushed for 199, and with a touchdown, he, and he actually caught a receiving touchdown in that game also. Also in the on the other side, you got Aaron Rodgers, who, who in the two matchups against the pack, or against excuse me, the Vikings, he rushed, he passed for 651 yards this year, but he was also sacked seven times in those two games, including five last Sunday, and three by Everson Griffin, who has really come on as of late. Actually, when when Brian Robinson went down with a shoulder injury, he, Everson Griffin has really come on for this team. And and Christian Ponder, who has been much maligned a lot of the season, he, yeah, he got off to a good start this season, but but then it, then uh, then he's had other games where he he hasn't even thrown for a hundred yards. And it's like I could probably throw for a hundred yards, and I'm 45 years old. But be that as it may, he's in the last three games he has not thrown any interceptions. He's played really well. But. As much as I would love to pick the Vikings in this game, I, I just have a hard time doing it. Because, number one, the Packers are at home. I know they've, even though they've lost four of their last six games at home in the playoffs, they're going to start, they're, they're getting people back, and they're getting people back healthy, like Charles Woodson, who's, who missed basically the second half of the season with a broken collarbone. And Randall Cobb should be back in this game. He, he did not play in the game on Sunday. And Jordy Nelson tweaked a knee, and he went out of that game also. But but they were both full, full participants in today's practice, so... As far as what I think is going to happen in this game, I think... I think Adrian will get his yards. He may score a couple touchdowns, but I think... I think Aaron Rodgers, especially if Antoine Winfield is not fully healthy and... Harrison Smith doesn't play, or if he's or if he's pretty limited. I really think that the Packers are arguing to advance in this game. I think the final score of this game will be 31-24. Okay, then then we get to the Sunday games. You got the you get the original Colts team, who used to be in Baltimore, against the current Colts team in Indianapolis. So you got the Colts against the Ravens, and there will be. Playing emotions on both sides of the both sides of the field in this game. On the Colts side, you got Chuck Pagano, who just came back from his bout with leukemia last weekend, and they and they ended up winning against the Houston Texans, and they finished eleven and five this year. They really banded together. This team did, and. You got to remember, this was a two-win team last year, and Curtis Painter was their starting quarterback, and they also had Dan Orlo Orlovsky after Peyton Manning was hurt all year due to his neck surgeries. But whew, yeah, that's it's one of the biggest turnarounds of, of a team in in NFL history. They, they, there's a nine-win difference this this year from this year to last year, so. Uh, and then he, and then we just heard the news that Ray Lewis is going to retire at the end of this year, whenever that is. And you think you really think Ray Lewis is going to let them lose without a fight? <laughs> think again. And another thing, Joe Flacco in his first five years in the in the league, he's made the he has made the playoffs each of his first five years in the league, and no other quarterback has done this. In the history of the league, and another thing about Andrew Luck, he, although he came, he brought his team back seven times, and the he had seven fourth quarter comebacks this year. He also threw eighteen interceptions. I mean, you would probably expect that from a rookie quarterback. He, the the only two quarterbacks in the league that threw more court, or interceptions than him were Tony Romo who you might expect, and Drew Brees, who I wouldn't have expected. But 
as far as how I think this game is going to turn out, I think I think the Ravens really need to get Ray Rice involved in this game because the Colts in, in Week 16 against the Chiefs they gave up over 350 yards rushing in that game, and against the Chiefs that I mean against any team that would be unacceptable, but especially against the Chiefs. And Jamal Charles ran all over him in that game. But as far as Reggie Wayne goes, he's been really revitalized this year. I mean, last year he, he was pretty much a non-entity last year. And this year he caught 100. He had 106 receptions for over 1,300 yards and five touchdowns this year. So, And like I said, if it's going to be a really emotional game on both sides of the ball. But as, and like I, what I said, Ray Lewis, I don't think he's going <clears> to... <throat> it doesn't really matter so much how he's, how much he's going to play in this game. I don't know how much he's going to play, but... But I, I think just his presence on the field will be enough to... Give the Ravens a win. I think they'll win 28-24. Alright, and now the final matchup of, of Wild Card Weekend. It'll be only the second matchup of... Rookie quarterbacks in playoff history there. Between the Seattle Seahawks and the Washington Redskins. It's going to be Russell Wilson against RG3, Robert Griffin the third. Uh, Washington won the game Sunday night uh, to win their first divisional title since 1999 when Brad Johnson was the quarterback. And this is probably the matchup of the two hottest teams in the league, so... So it's really kind of a shame that one one of the teams is gonna are gonna go out in the in wild in the wild card round. Well, the Redskins started off three and six this year, and and they and then they announced RG three as one of the captains of this team, and ever since then they've ran off seven wins in a row, which allowed them to win the NFC East title. Not to be outdone, the Seahawks have won their last five games, and they. We're able to solve up a wild card spot. So, Seahawks led the league in points against this year. They only gave up 15.3 points a game, so points might be hard to come by for the Redskins this year, although they did have the four, fourth highest ranked offense in the league, so. And it's also, it isn't just between Russell Wilson and RG3. You get the second and third leading rushers in this league, then number one was AP. But you got Alfred Morris, who was the second, who ranked second in the league in rushing this year. He was the rookie out of Hofstra. He was a sixth-round pick. And then you got Beast Mode himself, Marshawn Lynch, who was third, who ranked third in the league. So Seahawks ended up going undefeated at home. They were the only team to do it this year. But they only went three and five on the road. But they, but they've been better on the road lately. And with all that said, I think Russell Wilson won't. And the defense will be enough to win this game. And it's only gonna be their it's only gonna be their second road win ever in the playoffs. They've lost eight in a row, but I think that streak's going to end. And I think the final score will be twenty four to seventeen. Let me know what you think about the what's gonna happen in the in the wild card run of the playoffs. I'd like to hear your comments and who you think's gonna win. So anyway, this is Marvelous Mark signing off for now and Tune in next week when I will do my predictions on the divisional round of the playoffs. And I hope you had a happy new year and may 2013 be a great year for you. So long. Goodbye.